Let's take a look at sampling distributions and estimators. All right, the main objective of this section is sampling distribution of a statistic. So when we talk about of a statistic, uh, we may be looking at a sampling distribution of a mean. Sampling distribution means like taking a sample and finding the mean, taking a bunch of samples and finding the mean, and see how does that relate to the overall sample of uh, the data set. Or we may take, you know, a couple of data items and find the median and see how that relates to the median of the entire data set. Um, of course, each sample that we take, we would want to take the same number um, of items. All right, and then uh, by doing that, you'll see that some statistics are better at estimating the population parameter. Meaning, let's say that I had everyone's last test score in here, and I took groups of five. And so when I took those groups of five, I took you know a random five students, got their average on the last test. And I did that with a bunch of groups. All right. Then I took the average of the entire group. So do the averages or the average of the averages. I'm saying average when I'm talking about mean. Do they are they close? Does one um, estimate the other? Well, certain statistics estimations happen, but other statistics, like the median, uh, they do not go towards the population median or the population statistic. All right. A sampling distribution of a statistic, such as a mean or a sample proportion, is the distribution of all the values of the statistic when all possible samples of the same size n are taken from the same population. So that's what a sampling distribution of a statistic. And what they're talking about of a statistic, that can be a mean, median, mode, variance, standard deviation, uh, range, it can be any type of statistic. All right, it's the distribution of all the values of the statistic when all possible samples of the same size n are taken from the same population. The sampling distribution of the sample mean is the distribution of all the possible sample means with all samples having the same size n taken from the same population. So if we're talking about, you don't have to write all this down, um, I'll show you, I'm going to show you a picture of what we're talking about here. Um, let's say that we had a set of data and all of that data here, see all this, the collection of all the means we're here uh, under a normal bell-shaped curve. Then, when I find the mean of all these means, that's population mean, do each one of these means that I, that I take separately and look at, do they target or do they estimate the population mean? So if I looked at the mean of the means and got a population mean, do the individual means target that population mean? That's, that's what we're looking at um, if we look at a sampling distribution of a mean or of a sample mean. All right, sample means do target the value of the population mean. That is, the mean of the sample means is the population mean. So means do target the population mean. Sample means target the population mean. Uh, I know in a lot of your homeworks there will be a question when you figure out maybe the mean of a bunch of different sets then it will say does this target the mean of the population. Uh, and if we're talking about means it should. They should target because they do. Sample means do target population means. And then another uh, neat fact, the distribution of sample means tends to be a normal distribution. So kind of bell-shaped. Now you do have to take, you can't just take a random sample and stop with say five random samples. You have to take all possible random samples. So if I was doing that thing about taking five students out of this class and getting the mean of your five tests, I would need every possible 
outcome or every possible uh, sample. And so the larger the number, the larger like the, the total data items, the more work you would have to do. Most of these on the homework, you only have three, four, five data items because it would be a lot of different uh, samples that you'd have to look at. All right, sampling distribution of the variance. So instead of the mean, we're looking at the variance. Sample variances target the value of the population variance. That is, the mean of the sample variances is the population variance. All right. So if you have maybe every possible sample gives you 12 different uh, sets of items, sets of data items, and then you took the variance of all of those. Then the mean of the sample variances is the population variance. All right, sampling distribution of the proportion. When we talk about proportions, uh, that is going to relate back to, say, uh, probabilities. Those are proportions. So, you know, if I have, um, say, a blue, a red, and a green marble, and I wanted to take well, we wouldn't want to use that because that, that's not uh, numbers that we can average or anything like that. But say that uh, one family had one child, one family had two childs, and another family had three childs and, or children. And I wanted to know, say, if I selected two, what would be the average number of children? And this is going back to means, though. I guess for, for proportions, maybe... I would want to know something like what's the probability that the average that the family would have that the the sample would have an average of say 1.5 children. Well, that would be only the times whenever you took a sample of a family with one child and a family with with two children. So, there's two ways to do that. So, two out of the six possible samples or one third of the time you would get a proportion of 1.5. So let's see if proportions target the actual data set's proportion. Um, well, I guess before we talk about proportions, the population proportion is just called P. A sample proportion, the way we say this right here is P hat. A P with a little up carrot above it, that's P hat. All right, sample proportions target the value of the population proportion. That is, the mean of the sample proportions is the population proportion. And this, like the other two statistics we've looked at, uh, the distribution of sample proportions tend to be a normal distribution. So all three of these types of statistics that we've looked at, the mean, the variance, and a proportion all work out so that the mean of the sample means or proportions or variances is the population mean proportion or variance. What do you have a p hat for? P hat is sample proportion. All right, so means, variances, and proportions are called unbiased estimators. That means that they target the population parameter of mean, variance, or proportion. These statistics are better in estimating the population parameter. Biased estimators are medians, ranges, and standard deviations. Those three do not target the population parameter. It says the bias with standard deviation is relatively small in large samples, so S is often used to estimate. It's kind of strange how the variance does target the population variance. The sample variance targets the population variance, but the standard deviation, which is the square root of the variance, does not target the population standard deviation. But it says that the error is so small that it is still used to estimate the population 
uh, standard deviation. Okay. Consider repeating this process. Roll a die five times. Find the mean x bar, the variance s squared, and the proportion of odd numbers of the results. What do we know about the behavior of all sample means that are generated as this process continues indefinitely? We know that whatever we get for the mean, the variance, or the the proportion of odd numbers, will target what we would get if we were to do this an infinite number of times. So it will give us uh, very close to what we would get if we did the, we rolled the die an infinite number of times. That's because the mean, the variance, and a proportion are unbiased estimators. All right. So again, what does that mean? That means that you know, if we have this right here shows 10,000 trials. The mean of the entire of everything it says is 3.49. These sample means, they may not be exactly 3.49, but if we take every sample and we take the the mean of those, then they will give us 3.49. Same for, what is this, variance, because it's unbiased. These sample variances target or estimate the mean of the sample variances. Same with proportions. All of these target the mean of all the proportions. Sampling without replacement would have a very practical advantage of avoiding wasteful duplication. However, or whenever, the same item is selected more than once. Just let me go back through that because me saying however kind of mess that up. Uh, sampling without replacement would have the very would have the very practical advantage of avoiding wasteful duplication whenever the same item is selected more than once. However, we are interested in sampling with replacement for these two reasons. When selecting a relatively small sample, sample form, it's supposed to be from, a large population, it makes no significant difference whether we sample with replacement or without replacement. Sampling with replacement results in independent events that are unaffected by previous outcomes, and independent events are easier, easier to analyze and the results in simpler calculations and formulas. So without replacement does kind of complicate things a little bit. All right. The last slide here, many methods of statistics require a simple random sample. Some samples, such as voluntary response samples or convenience samples, could easily result in very wrong results. So like, you know, if I'm doing a study and I have a voluntary response sample, then the stuff that we've talked about may not apply because, um, you know, the only people that do usually do voluntary response samples or convenient samples are people who are either bored or people who have something to complain about generally. So just be careful when applying this to something like that. All right, and so that is all that section 6.4 talks about.